very few students okay just give me one minute okay so good afternoon good that uh, we could come back hopefully for the last class so today we will be talking about robot applications okay so for your information uh, this today's lecture is already uploaded and along with it the material of this topic is not available in my book so i have a separate material uh, which is uploaded as appln dot pdf okay so this is this here and uh, 10 15 is not 10 15 you have to accordingly calculate 15 minutes before the end of today's class so which is about 2 45 in your local time uh, these following eight students uh, will come and to uh, they will ask me questions or i will ask them questions so, looking at the review of our last lectures, what we discussed is the use of computers for robot control and when we say control, we talked about how to speed up the processes of calculations in terms of software, in terms of hardware. So, software speed up were discussed. So, software speed up methods and the hardware considerations were taken. <coughs> And in hardware, we mostly talked about the parallel processing of different calculations for different joints. Then we talked about hardware requirements and the control requirements that what are the steps <coughs> should be uh, considered while controlling a robot. Then finally, uh, the communication between the operator and uh, the robot. Uh, we could do the programming in terms of online programming or offline programming right online programming we have seen that you use a teach pendant to control the robot and offline programming you use a software that means a CAD model of the robot to do the programming before you really download the same to the real robot. So, today we will talk about uh, little interactions that is where robots are suitable then we will talk about different industrial applications of robots and then we will see non industrial applications of robots like space underwater etc and then we will have a summary of our today's presentation so today 90 percent of the robots if you if we talk about robots as I told you robots like our human hand and 90 percent of those are used in factories okay for different purposes and I would say the majority of them uh, is in automobile assembly lines automobile welding etc etc. So, we refer them as the industrial robots and as I told you I repeat they are like our human hand just look at me. So, this is a serial robot and it is like <coughs> you have a waist motion, you have a hand uh, we have a waist motion, we have a shoulder motion, we have a elbow motion and then you have the wrist motion which we started talking from the very first day of our class. So, this is the type of robot we have talked and they are used in industrial robots 90 percent of those. Go back to the slide, however, robots are slowly finding their way into warehouses, laboratories and research explorations, power plants, hospitals, undersea and even outer space right uh, for Mars exploration, moon explorations right. So, all those are applications for outer space. Now, what are the advantages of uh, industrial robots? Okay, so, we come back from the first class to the last class again to remember or to remind ourselves 
that why we should be using industrial robots or rather robots for industrial applications. Now, robots never get sick, robots never get sick or need to rest, so they can work 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. Okay. So, this is one of the biggest advantage. When the task required would be dangerous okay, for a person, then let the robot do the work. Robots do not get bored because they do not have mind. So, the work that is repetitive and unrewarding is of no problem for a robot. right? So, in the first industrial application is material handling up to 95 percent of the time involved in manufacturing. This is an important data that 95 percent of the time involved in manufacturing a part is composed of transfer and waiting time. What I am telling you, you can observe when you go for a factory visit, you know, just observe that machining time or welding time is very less compared to transfer from one machine to another machine and then wait for the next machine to finish the earlier job etcetera etcetera. And only 5 percent of the total time is for actual processing time that means either machining or welding or painting. So, that is a very interesting study or interesting data that only 5 percent time we do the, the real processing time. In this respect, I wanted to remind you one thing as a student or as a researcher, 25 percent of the time goes to write a good report right? and 75 percent work you do it. Many times when you do a project, now we think okay, at the end we will write the report and submit it hurriedly. Now, I thought this is an opportunity to share this thing. 25 to 30 percent of your total project duration, if you have a 6 months duration, so 2 months should be kept for writing a report okay, about 25 uh, percent. Coming back to our material handling, whereas the processing time has been reduced considerably by automations. Like for example, you have CNC machines, right? very fast, very accurate. No, no change of devices, now you can change the tools and do all this thing. So, even for the 5 percent of the processing time, we have a large improvement. So, 5 percent might have gone down to say 3 percent, but much less progress has been done in handling and loading. So, 95 percent of the time is spent, but not much development has happen, okay. whereas for 5 percent we have been struggling or we have achieved much improvement. So, this is a high time or rather when the robots came into picture that was the main intention that how to reduce that 95 percent of the time. Before I proceed further, I will show you some pictures of material handling robots and to mention these figures I have not uploaded, but they are all taken from the sites. So, you just give the keywords and you should be able to see many such uh, robots. So, here is a, a is a CAD environment for assembly, it is not very clearly visible, but the next one is very clear that how uh, uh, many wafers used for I making integrated circuits, how they are taken from one place here, brought it here and then taken it there for some assembling operation. So, this device, this item is put over some other item and as you can see on the body, it is written FANUK. So, this is uh, from a company called FANUK. The next one is not very clear, but again is some assembly operations, uh, may be it is uh, gluing something not very clear from the pictures, but I just wanted to show you the setup. Like here you have the controller sitting there, this is a robot here 
and here you have the teach pendant uh, to do the online programming and so and so forth. The next one again you can see that how a robot is handling uh, some uh, boxes and they are not very clear uh, what is uh, the material inside. It could be noodles may be inside or it may be something you know, we do not know paints right. So, how it is uh, using. Then this is in a larger setup now many robots are doing the assembly operations. One such video we have seen it in the last class or not last but last class and if the time permits I will show repeat that video too. Here again uh, these are some uh, packing is happening. So, maybe gluing of uh, some stickers on the top of it again this is a fanuk. And this is now the robot is placed on a kind of a linear slide here. So, it does something here and does something there again I can see these are the cardboard boxes maybe the robot does the folding folding of the cover here. Okay. So, again we came back to the old one. Okay. So, the fully automatic system that were developed for mass production that means transfer lines in the automobile industry are rigid which are called hard automation. Now, there are automations where it can do specifically 3 or 4 jobs and this has been introduced in automotive sectors for certain types of work, but they are not suitable for batch production. So, here we have a definition of hard automation and the flexible automation. Hard automation you should be adopting if your number of pieces are in the order of millions. Okay. So, then batch productions will not be very economic. However, for the batch production that means 50 to 100,000 parts annually no, you require a batch production that means, if some activity is going on and if you want to change the type. For example, if you want to get welding done okay, and then again uh, do the painting by the same machine. So, those have to be flexible in terms of their programming, the path it traverses etcetera. In hard automation if you have a machine for welding no, it will be extremely difficult to switch or the use the same machine for painting whereas, flexible automation like robots it is not so difficult. So, that is the point I am mentioning here a more flexible automation a more flexible automation is technology is required technology is required which takes into account the frequent changes uh, frequent changes in production is needed and for this category of industrial production is about 75 percent of the manufacturing parts. So, hard automation is applicable for millions parts in a year, but as it is mentioned here 75 percent of the 75 percent of the industrial products are in the range of 50 to 1000 pieces per year. So, which means flexible automation is the one which should be used and robot consists a part of flexible automation. So, with the development of industrial robots a new solution is offer offered to the handling and machine to loading of small and medium series of parts. Actually loading and unloading machine tools are the major application for robots. Remember I told you that 95 percent of the time goes for all other work than actual processing right. So, this loading unloading falls in the 95 percent and the robots are utilized to load and unload the machine tools in two basic configurations. In one case robot is robot is tending a single machine that means, robot is picking up a finished product from one machine and 
putting an unfinished product to the same machine. So, one robot per machine or you can have this arrangement a robot serving several machine. So, depending on the speed at which you want to run uh, your machines, you can decide one robot per machine or one robot or several machines. Next after material handling that means taking the parts from one place to another place, the next application is welding and this is the most uh, popular or mostly used applications. So, spot welding, what is a spot welding? A spot welding robot has to carry the welding gun okay, which consists of electrodes and cables which are required to conduct the high current and sometimes a water cooling system for the electrodes. Since it has to carry a heavy load which I am pointing out in the next one that welding gun is relatively heavy in the range of 10 to 80 kg. Many DC motor driven robots cannot handle such heavy loads. So, as we have studied in our actuator section, when the loads are heavy that means payloads are heavy, we should be going for hydraulically powered robot. So, before I move to the next slides, let us see let us see the photos available in this link. So, this is uh, one welding operation is going on. This is two robots uh, doing two welding in parallel. This is a robot which is doing welding of two parts. This is uh, several robots are doing the welding to a car body and this is also like here he is trying to do the controlling or the online programming. So, this is uh, the way uh, the online programming is going on. Okay. So, we end it. Let us try to uh, see some of the videos. I might have shown you in the last one of the classes, but let us see it again. This is an arc welding machine. So, this is again uh, programming by simulation which you have studied in last class. So, let us uh, see the other video. So, again uh, uh, this is uh, in a software environment, first you see how your simulation will be done. 
so programming by simulation so it's like a car assembly operation going on Okay. So, doing some job here. So, not explicitly mention what it is doing it. Then uh, we see this one. This is a laser welding. So, it is a non contact uh, welding basically the laser ray points to an area where it melts and joins two parts there as it has been indicated here for the so as the smoke comes out you know so that portion let me repeat. So, it is just posi positioning the laser pointer at certain angle depending on the oil quality. Okay. And the, the last one of the welding series, I think we have uh, seen it earlier, but let us see it, it is quite favorite of mine also. So, this is uh, basically assembly is uh, spot welding and assembly. So, this is the spot welding part <coughs> of the car sides.
So you see this is a point to point control actually and this is a continuous control which has been done now by this this robot going from one orientation to another orientation. Car door. This is the KUKA robot. You see, it's KUKA is written. So the same model I took with me, the small one, one fiftieth scale. Mine was. Okay, so that was uh, assembly plus spot welding. Next uh, to continue with the spot welding, the control system for spot welding robot is of a point to point I just mentioned. The desired position and accuracy is usually not high, but uh, and the repeatability of plus minus uh, 1 millimeter is sufficient. The repeatability is much better than that obtained by the human welders and that is why uh, the use of robot is uh, important no? because you create a consistent quality based on the repeatability. Further the operation of robotized spot welding is very fast, faster than, faster than human operator. Okay? As you have seen the way the robots have been doing it, so much faster than the human welder and position of the weld is more accurate resulting in more uniform quality. Spot welding robots are used in fabrication of structural metal products as you have seen for the car bodies, domestic appliances like fans and then uh, uh, blenders, no? then metal furnitures, uh, containers which do not require liquid tight joints. A typical assembly line produces between 50 to 90 cars per hour and the work is performed while the car bodies are continuously moving on the conveyors, okay. which means that the oil location specified by the task programs should be synchronized with the velocity of the assembly. Okay. Now then the arc welding, we have seen already one arc welding in one of those videos, while most robotic arc welding uses a consumable wire electrodes. Okay. For example, MIG, MIG welding and with an automatic wire feeder welding with non-consumable tungsten electrode. Okay. Now in arc welding, the robots use a welding gun as a tool. But that tool is not so heavy compared to our the other type. Okay. The weight of the welding gun is usually not heavy. So, we had a heavy welding gun for spot welding where we had to use hydraulically powered robot whereas here is not so heavy. So, we can use DC servo motor driven robots are typically used in arc welding although hydraulically drive robots can also be used. Welding speed range from 0.25 to 0.25 to 3 meter per minute. The task of robot here is to lead the welding gun along the program trajectory. Okay. So, this control system falls in the category of continuous path type. In all cases, the control computer of the robot is interfaced with the control unit of the welding equipment 
in order to synchronize the start and termination of the robot motions with the cycle of welding equipment. Now, we come to the next application. So, we have the assembly operations, we have the welding operation and then we come to spraying operation. Now, spraying operation is very dirty job as I have written in the first point, the unhealthy and unpleasant environment of the painting booth in industry made this process an ideal candidate for ideal candidate for application of robots. The solvent material, the solvent materials you know, that are used in spray painting are toxic and therefore, operators must be protected by masks and be provided with a fresh air ventilation. Okay. Let us see some of the photos for spray painting. Here you see how this part is painted with the spray here. This is a one spraying painting gun. This is how the car body is getting painted and we have the beginning. We will see some video here. I play it again. So, this is a spraying going on the black spray here. Okay. Then I have another one. This appears to be the second layer. This is going to the finest for drying. Okay. So, you have seen the spraying operation. So, next we move uh, to some more facts about painting. The painting area must be dust free and temperature control and consequently the painting booth is small in size and inconvenient for the operators. Again we emphasize the point of uh, that this operation should be used uh, by robots only. The noise arising from the air discharge to the painting nozzles can cause irreversible damage to the ears. So, human being uh, should avoid for sprinting. For all these reasons, spray painting become one of the first applications of robots. Spray painting robots are also a continuous path capability and have the following characteristic. High level of manipulator dexterity is there, large working volume for small base manipulator, compact wrist, small payload and the low accuracy and repeatability because it does not matter uh, if the paint goes 1 millimeter here and there. Finally, the requirement for repeatability and dissolution are the least severe in painting compared to the other application, least severe. A repeatability will the 2 meter throughout the working volume is regarded as a good repeatability measure. Then we talk about assembling and palletizing. Okay. So, we have covered now material handling, welding and 
painting so three so now let us look at the assembling operation assembling with industrial robots are mainly used for small products such as electrical switches and small motors assembly operations can be designed in any coordinate system like Cartesian system or cylindrical system or spherical system and articulated system all of them we have studied in our chapter 2. Let us look at some of the assembling operations. So, again the assembly of car bodies which we have seen in one of the other videos also. Here again uh, three robots are collaborating to have the parts assembled and here again uh, couple of robots four robots it seems like are working for the assembly of cars. So, let us see this video. So, assembly operations where human beings are also supplying some of the materials and which is going through the conveyor belt here and then uh, these four robots are trying to do some assembly things at the center of the on the workbench before it is transferred to the finished good. And then that human being is taking it away. So, this is the work cells actually in uh, maybe other course you might have heard that uh, work cells where the robots are doing some operations. So, next one is palletizing, palletizing means arranging things one after another. So, here we see some of the palletizing operations. So, stacking the boxes no? and then here also stacking uh, arranging the four chocolate. Okay. So, chocolate boxes uh, this is doing something not very clear from the picture. So, we skip then uh, for assembly purposes or for uh, mainly for assembling purposes, it is sometimes useful to do uh, with the SCARA robot. Let us see what is SCARA robot before we see its video. Many tasks require only vertical assembly motions. These days with many things electronically controlled, it is very important that vertically assembling is done and one example is assembly of printed circuit boards. So, these operations are done using a 4 degree of freedom robot. It can pick up parts located on the horizontal plane, bring them to the assembly location, orient them and finally, insert them in the vertical motions. So, these kind of motions are called SCARA robot and again we come back to its expansion selective compliance assembly robot arm is the expansion of SCARA robot and let us see the SCARA robot which is available in my laboratory here, it is video, but you will not be able to see a real operation done, only you will be able to see the video. So, it is a three uh, joint axis one here, one there and then a third rotation here and then a, uh, so this rotation here was the, the third rotation and the fourth one is the, the up and down motion of the gripper. Let us see it again. So, this up and down is one motion, this is another motion. So, this is gripper rotation will be shown here now. You can see the motion. Okay. 
okay. So, this kind of robots are used in assembling of PCB printer circuit boards. Then we come to machining operations. In the machining operations, two are the very popular machining operations are drilling and the grinding. Okay. So, in the drilling robots can replace a manual operators if the template hole is provided with a chamfered guide. Okay. So, you know what a chamfered guide is suppose if you have a 5 millimeter hole to be made. No? So, you can have a little groove made with a larger size so that it can guide the drilling tool. The gripper it can work in two modes the gripper holds a portable pneumatic drill and guides from hole to hole. And since drilling is a point to point operation, the manual teaching method is appropriate. Let us see some photos of machining. This is, of course, uh, not uh, this is some debugging operations is happening here, not very clear. Here also, debugging operation, small grinding tool is at the end. Here is the drilling operation going on, small drill bit is making holes. Here is some grinding operation, some polishing operation on the surface of this. Here also grinding, you can see the sparks all around the place. This is not very clear, we will skip. Again, this is a grinding operation on a drum. This is polishing operation, it's some grinding with different tools. Again, we are back to the initial position. Debugging operation, on the other hand, uh, is uh, basically grinding operation, and bars are generated almost always when machining is performed on metal parts. The removal of these bars is expensive operations. Most debugging is performed manually by the workers. Okay. So, if they can be automated, it could be a very much good, uh, very good time saving. So, most debugging is performed manually by workers equipped with appropriate tools, and there are two basic ways to perform robotized debugging. In one case, the part is if the part is relatively lightweight then the robot can pick up or rather the object can be picked up by the robot and brought to the debugging tool. But if the part is heavy, the reverse can be done. That means, robot can pick up the tool and take it to the heavy load like the car. In both the cases, the relative motion between the tool and part is a continuous path type with a high repeatability no? approximately. 0.2 millimeter is the repeatability. Now, we go for other applications. So, we have seen assembly operation, welding operations, painting operations and then uh, palletizing operations and at the beginning we have seen metal handling. So, about 5 types of industrial operations we have seen. Now, let us look at other applications of robots. Medical, let us see some medical robots before I explain you. So, something with the mouth here, this is not very clear what is being done by the robot, but the next one is very clear. It is a robotic assisted surgery, one, two, three robots are doing some surgery on, on, on certain portion of the body. This may be a simulated environment here, this may not be real body but uh, robots are practicing here before it is applied to the, the real body. So, actually robots on its own does not do the operation. So, medical robots have found application mainly in surgery and the goal of surgical robots is not to replace surgeons with a robot. Okay. The uh, intention is get the robots help we can get the robots help 
So, the goal of surgical robots is not to replace uh, surgeons with a robot, but to provide the surgeons with a new set of very versatile tools th that extend the doctor's ability to treat patients. Hence, medical robotic systems are called surgical assistants that work cooperatively with surgeons. So, in mining operation, in order to enhance the productivity and access unworkable mineral seams, that means why the minerals are available and reduce the human exposure to inhospitable environment of dust, noise, gas, water, moving equipment and robots are used. So, let us see one such mobile robot here. So, you can see uh, this is a mobile uh, robot and it may have some tools here and there to go for uh, mining operations that cut some places and probably collect coals. Then we have uh, the space uh, applications and explorations of planets, moons and near bodies in space are goals for using robots. You know there is the International Space Station which is assembling a space station where different experiments will be performed. Let us see some space robots here. Uh, this is very small here, I will just enlarge it. So, this is called uh, the Canada arm. No? So, this will be this side will be typically fixed to the spacecraft and then uh, this is the arm. So, this you can see is written Canada, it is a Canada arm. So, it will have payloads here okay. and then these are smaller arms here and so they will also do something you know, create a a space station where astronauts can go there, but most of the time you no, know, there will be experiments performed with the robots or whenever astronauts go there, they will perform some experiments which otherwise not possible to conduct on earth. This is actually a test on earth about a, this is a test on earth on Mars rovers. Okay. The next slide will be the Mars rovers which has actually gone to Mars for collecting samples. So, this is the one. So, this testing before it was sent was done on a vehicle like this thing on earth. So, I said explorers of planets, moons, etcetera, the benefit of being able to achieve many of the things a human could do, but at lower cost without endangering the human life. What is meant here is whatever tasks space robots are supposed to do could have been done by the human being you know, at lower cost because the technology development costs very high, but if we send human being there might be a loss of life. So, just to save the loss of life, all industries, particularly government agencies, are investing a lot of money in space robotic applications. To be effective, to be effective, such robotic system must be versatile and robust, with cost reduction becoming increasingly important. Now, these are multi-billion dollars projects, you know? so there must be an ways to reduce the cost. And now, there are variety of tasks that the robots can do in space including space manipulation, servicing equipment in space etcetera. Like Hubble telescope repair has been conducted by the astronauts, where the astronauts were placed on the tip of a Canada arm. So, the one which is showing it. So, so, astronauts will be uh, held by the robot arm like this 
and then they will go near the the uh, Hubble telescope may be here and they will do the repair job and then come back to its own space station after the work is done. So, there are three characteristics that a robot should have for space missions. They should be compact and light, they should be robust because if you do a little mistake there, if it cannot perform the task which is supposed to do, then multi billion is gone right just for one small mistake and versatility and adaptability like for even for Hubble telescope now it needs a repair every 5, 6 years for the upgradation of its control systems and other things. Underwater robotics, underwater application of robots involve checking the minerals. Okay, before that let me show you uh, some more advanced research for space robot applications. It is called uh, instead of the robots you have seen, it is a hopping robots. So, this is another type of robots are being conceived these days instead of sending big big robots like Mars rover. Can you have small robots like this? So, this is some artistic imagination. So, something spring loaded. So, this is a conceptual thinking, this does not exist in reality at this moment. lost. Okay. So, the idea here is that this kind of robots uh, will be carrying maybe a camera or some sensors as it going from one place to another place using hopping, it will take data and send to earth for analysis that what are the things there. And since they are very small, no, so the, the missions uh, need not be very expensive missions, right. Whereas, for the Mars rover, so even though after going to space, there is a microgravity environment, no, it may be very lightweight there, but here they are about 150 kilos. Okay. So, but whereas this kind of hopping robots might be 2 kilos, 3 kilos. So, the modern research on space robotic is let us have 2 kilo, 3 kilo lighter robots than having 150 kilos you know, heavy robots. So, underwater robotics are used for explorations of minerals and uh, salvaging sunken vessels you know the accidents happen. So, we need to go and collect uh, those ships and vessels. And then of course, the repair of ships, repair of ships either on sea or the dry dock. So, then we come to defense, the, the defense people namely the air force, navy are both interested in mobile firefighters. Okay. Other defense applications of robots will be on the battlefield itself, application of robots for surveillance and guard duty right can be in power plants, oil refineries and other large civilian facilities that are potential targets of terrorist groups. So, let us see some of the defense robots. So, here may be a small vehicle is going for surveillance purposes like here you can see the camera is seen here 
and here for disposal of dangerous material and this looks like this looks like our the Mars robots kind of a bomb disposal uh, robot and this is for surveillance purposes. So, other different application of robot will be in the battlefield ok. So, we have done it. So, with this I want to summarize today that industrial applications uh, were presented, other applications were also mentioned and photos and videos were shown. So, before I end this class I wanted to just uh, summarize what are the topics finally, we have covered and what will be the the your final exam. So, words we have content content. So, today we are uh, finishing our lecture. So, uh, 28 lectures. So, this we already covered before uh, our mid term exam or mid semester exam and these are the uh, topics we have covered and here the yellow color means no, this was uh, not in the uh, topic, but after the feedback I have added it and the material has been taken from J. J. Craig and the industrial application since it is not there in the book. So, it is uh, separate material has been provided in a PDF file and so if there is any questions no, please ask uh, I will wait for about a minute. Otherwise, no, those uh, eight students will come forward and ask questions or I will ask them questions okay. and that way uh, this will be the last class about a week's time we will come back again for any clarifications and I think Professor Madhushudan Rao told you that our exam the robotic exam will be on 16th of October from 10 to 12 am in your local time. So, if there is a questions in next 1 minute otherwise these 8 students start coming in the front bench. You can ask me from any topic no. yes. Uh, please repeat be louder. Yes, as the name of the exam is final, so the course content should be final that means from 1st to 28th all lectures. Okay. Very bad. I cannot help because that is a style of exam, is not it? But uh, I wish you all the best eh? and uh, do not worry, I think you have done good in your mid semester exam, right? Except uh, 2 3, no, those 2 3 can study hard. And if you have doubts, please send me email, no, if necessary, we may fix up some. Uh, and a Skype timing or we can have the timing in this room also. No? So, that 1 hour or 1 and a half or whatever time slot we get within a week's time try to utilize that timing whenever it will be announced no? utilize that timing very effectively. No? So, please try to study those portions which you have not touched yet okay? so that you have many many questions on that slot. Okay. So, can I have uh, these uh, 8 students in the front and I think with this every students I could make them come in front of the camera at least twice after I came back no, that is the statistics I have seen it. So, Tesome Mulate please raise your hand ok please come front 
Thomas Michel Sodio, okay, good. Osenu Ali, okay, good. Yegena Yege Tane Tesfaye, Ato Yege Tane Tesfaye, absent. Yes, absent. Okay. Missed his chance to meet me directly. Okay. Then we have Yetegesu J Ude Ato Yatagesu. Okay, okay, I got you. Ato Yonathan. Raise your hand. Absent again. absent good so others will have more chances to ask ato yosef hailie raise your hand okay good and ato jemishel amade raise your hand okay good 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 i can see you okay now i have who will ask the question first now thomas is looking at what to ask You, okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You ask anything you like. Okay. 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 When we are finding the horizontal polynomial. Yes. At the, at the final. Yes. The fi on the final one, what we get the equation is on the, the exercise book end. Okay. On the book end, they are different. And for the final. I think uh, it's not correct. Uh, I can't uh, get the equation of the final for the different theta final one and theta final. This one? The equation is this example? Oh, sorry. I'll just. Slide. Example 11.1. This one? Yes. So, this, this result, you are not getting it? Yes, yes. Time is 1.5 between 1.5 and 2. Between 0.5 and 1.5 and 2. So, this yes. now what you are not getting this coefficients? Yes, the coefficients you, you reach given the right formula for AC and A4. Uh, that was this one. A three and A four. Yes, yes. And so, if you use these formulas, you are telling that you are not getting a three. So this is a three. Is this one eighty and minus eighty? So you are not getting that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, which one? Yes. Yes, sir. With uh, 1.5, with 1.5 uh, in between, that's not possible. In the example. No, I think, okay. Which is not possible? The coefficients are not coming to be correct for you. Is that the doubt? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so. Okay, you pl you please try again and check with your friend if they are getting correct or not. If it is not happening, send me an email. Okay, that what are the calculations you are doing? It tell me the steps. Okay, in each step the values. Okay, it should be coming because I have checked it before coming to the class. So for me it was coming. Maybe you are making a mistake of TF. TF here I hope you understand it will be 1.5 to 2. So, the starting value is 1.5 T 0 and T final is 2. So, this is 0.5. So, for you T 5 is 0.5 right and theta f minus theta 0 this theta 0 is not 
this theta 0 is not 0. Okay, look at the example if we can see it. Okay. So, theta between 1.5 and 2 it is not theta 0 is 90, it will be different theta 0 will be calculated for that zone. So, theta 0 uh, for, for example, if you put 1.5 here, so 1.5 minus 0 0.5 it is 1 and this is minus 20 65. So, at 1 minute. So, this theta 0 here is 65 okay. and theta f will be I think you might be making a mistake. So, this is initial and final this initial and final 90 to 65, but if you look at the plots the t 0, t 0.5, 1.5 and 2. So, we have to see between this zone theta 0 is 90 and theta final is 85. Between t 0.5 to 1.5 theta 0 is uh, 85 and then up to this much is 65. Okay. So, this is the theta 0 sorry this is theta 0 when t equal to 0.5. So, please see if there is a confusion no, send me an email with the steps you are following. Okay. Next question. Hello. Yes. I am Sajasu. Mm -hmm. Regarding to today's class. Yes. I have a question. Please. Uh, uh, material handling in your PowerPoint slide, please be shown. Material handling. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? Up to 95 percent to it, uh, of the total time involved in manufacturing. Uh, what do you mean uh, that that time compared to 5 percent of the total time? Sup yes. Suppose if you are manufacturing a piston head okay, of a engine. Now, piston head suppose you want to talking about machining of the piston head. So, the piston head comes uh, in a say in a box and then it is placed uh, on a conveyor that carries the piston head in front of the machines and then the operator loads the machine uh, the piston head to the machines and the machining operation is done after machining operation is done it is taken out put it in a different machines. So, talking about coming on the conveyor then going out of the conveyor fitting it centering it all these things are the 95 percent of the time the actual machining time is only 5 percent. Not include up to uh, the user, time taken to the user, the user? Not user because we are talking about the manufacturing part. Suppose it enters, suppose, suppose I have a machine, let me try to sketch it for you. Suppose I have this is my watt piece okay, and this is my machine. So, some machining operation is happening here may be this is rotating, but before it is placed here now it has to come somebody has to bring it say uh, it is a table. So, somebody is stacking this watt piece watt piece. Okay. So, this work piece has to be placed here after it placing it somebody has to clamp it okay. and while clamping it may be it has to be aligned in this line. So, some adjustment as you do in your drilling uh, sorry in your lead machines in your lead machines you have you no know, the chucks uh, which will hold the object you, know, you do the centering. So, all this operation. So, actual machining actual machining is only 5 percent then uh, placing 
on machine uh, centering ok. Then uh, removal from machine this is about 95 percent. So, basically it is a non productive time if we can reduce it. So, that is the idea. So, these are the other operations ok. Yes. That object shows the controller, the controller in the robot arm uh, that is follow the task and reject the disturbance. Right. But what my question is, how does the controller reject the disturbance? Okay, let's see. Okay, where is that? Okay, not this one, next one. Feedback. Okay, here if we uh, let us see the actually the reject here does not mean it is been removed, the reject here means the even though there is a uh, what is it let us see poles transfer function example feedback scheme ah, reject the disturbance here. Here uh, reject does not mean that you remove the disturbance, disturbance is there ok. Just like in our block example, suppose in this example uh, for example, let us see okay. Okay. Uh, one minute and, uh, block, 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 block. I want to look for here. Yeah. Suppose, uh, this force is my controlling force, it is not there. Suppose, this is a block and this block uh, has wind is blowing here. As wind is blowing, it is moving, it is vibrating. Okay. Suppose, because of wind that is a disturbance, it is going this one okay. and I want that this should not happen ok. So, I say ok let me introduce a force f which should be if this is going in these directions if wind is blowing in these directions taking my block in this my force can apply exactly opposite in these directions and can make my object stationary ok. So, now what is that f which can make this thing stationary. So, to do that thing what we say is ok, if there is a disturbance here. So, when we write the equation of motion, we take into account the disturbance in the equation of motion, then we can write, then we can write this kind of equation of motion and we can say now the force the controlling force we take it in this manner and then finally, we say that if if b if b dot b prime can be made equal to this right then things will be under control right and what is f if we have related in terms of k p and k v. So, ultimately if I can choose k p and k v value k v and k p value such that b prime happens this then we know then we know that the behavior will be like that ok. So, after you have chosen these values if you calculate your force values from here then if you al calculate your force 
you may find that your force is actually opposite. So, if this is the disturbance I have, you will see your force will be like this. So, what I am telling is that you choose the force in terms of kp and kv, then you apply the natural behavior conditions of critical damping and after you have chosen kp and kv, you can go back and calculate what is your f and b or f value will be sorry f value will come exactly opposite to your your uh, it will come opposite to your this it will come opposite to this disturbance value which i was trying to show you so here uh, it is not it is rejecting it is not throwing away outside what it is saying is even though there is a disturbance is there i make f in such a manner that I feel a this disturbance does not exist. So, this disturbance does not exist. So, this is the meaning of disturbance rejection. Is that all right? Okay. Let us take the last question. Who wants to ask the question? Yes. Regarding the manufacturing aspect of automation in the robot. Okay. What is the deviation? The deviation of the robot from automation. Many people say that both have the same purpose regarding the manufacturing aspect. Now, please repeat the question. What is the difference between automation and robot? Difference between automation and Robotics is one element in automation. Automation is something which can be done automatically and robot is a part of it. Suppose in a factory I have automation, so robot is it like in our, let me show you that video again. It is like our video of our welding, right. So, in this video, no, we have the video. In this video, it's, it looks like an automatic factory here, right? And in this factory, everything is happening automatically. And here you have the robot is picking up this object, okay? Let us watch it what the robot is doing. So, it is picking up the object and it is placing it there, okay? And then you see. Ah, now, this is a conveyor is taking it, right. So, conveyor is one element of automation, robot is one element of automation. So, without robots, we are not able to do the automation. So, automation is a process and robot is a one element or one weapon to achieve that automation. So, that is the meaning of robotics in automation. So, in this video, we are seeing how the robots is used in automated factory shop. Okay. 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 So, if there is no question uh, on your own, then I can stop and uh, wish you all the best for the exam and hope uh, you will have lot of questions during our interactive sessions. Thank you very much.